Hello Year 12s and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's lesson we're continuing with our topic of sequences and series and we're going to start looking at our first type of special series, an arithmetic series. Now, in the last lesson we talked about um, the sum of a, of a general series and we talked about our um, sigma notation. And so here uh, when we uh, have sigma notation of a particular sequence we're adding from uh, we're adding all the terms in our sequence from the bottom value, so k, so t of k, our kth term, all the way up to, so it's gonna, next term will be k plus 1, plus all the way up to tl. And the other thing that we talked about was what a partial sum was. So a partial sum was when we added up all the terms, starting from the first term, all the way up to the nth term. And so here that was when this matched up with the index of our partial sum. In today's lesson we're continuing with this topic of sequences and we're in particular we're looking at um, a, our first type of series um, and it's an arithmetic series. So what happens when we add up the terms of an arithmetic progression? And there's some particular patterns that we notice. So what we're going to do is we're going to first derive the formula that we're going to get for the partial sum of an arithmetic series. Now here what we have is for an arithmetic series, what we want to do is we want to add up all the um, first n terms, so sum to n terms. So here I've got Sn and I've got T1 plus T2 all the way up until Tn. So that was the not um, notation that we used here. And so what we have here, um, we're going to call, we're going to say that this is equal to um, the first term. Well, if you remember from our notation of um, sequences, the first term is just going to be A. We just use that notation of A to represent my first term. Then the second term for an arithmetic series, well, what happens is we, on top of our um, starting value, we just add on um, that common difference. So the second term is going to be A plus D. And we're going to keep adding on these terms all the way until the end. And what's going to happen is um, we're going to add up all the way up until Tn. Now, we normally would have a formula for this, but here we're going to just call it L. So I'm going to add up all the way to L. And I'm just going to add on an additional term here. The term before L is just going to be L minus D because that's just one common difference less than our final term L. Okay, so that's what um, the sum of the first N terms is going to look like. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to just rewrite this same thing here but in reverse order. Now you might be wondering what difference does that make? It doesn't actually make any difference. It's going to be the exact same thing. So here I'm going to rewrite it in reverse order. So I'm just going to start with the last term, so Tn. So here's going to be L plus the term after L this time is going to be L minus D. And we're going to repeat this all the way up until the bottom. And so the second last term is A plus D, our starting term plus D plus A for our starting term. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because now we have two equations for Sn. So here, this is our partial sum Sn, and this is our, our partial sum Sn, and so we have this formula for our partial sum. We have these two formulas, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the two sums together. Now if I add the two sums, if you have a look on my left hand side, if I add those two values together, I'm just going to get two lots of this partial sum, two lots of Sn. So two lots of Sn. Now on my right hand side, when I add this together, what's going to happen? Well, what happens is, well, if you have a look at each of the terms I'm adding, and the reason why I've rewritten it in reverse notation so that we can actually see this, well, if I have a look at the first pair, I've got A plus L. So here I've got A plus L. Now the next term, next pair, if I add this next pair of terms over here, when I add these two next following two terms, well, what happens? Well, I've got A plus D plus L minus D. Well, the two Ds are going to cancel each other out. And so what I'm left with is A plus L. And so this pattern is going to continue on and on and on and on and on and on and on for the whole pattern, even up until this second last term. So this term here, the Ds are going to cancel as well. And so we're going to get A plus L. And the final term is also going to do the same thing. We're just going to get A plus L. And how many times has this happened? Well, in my sequence, there was there were nine, uh, oh, not nine, N terms. So this is going to happen N times. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write this as N lots of A plus L. N lots of A plus L. So because each time we paired this up, we just get A plus L. 
Okay, and so here, if I was to simplify this, all I get is then Sn is just equal to n divided by 2, by moving that 2 over, times a plus l. And so here, if I want to find the sum of a arithmetic progression, all we need to do is just take, um, figure out how many terms there are, n, and figure out our first term and our last term, and then we can use this formula to help me figure that out. Now, why I said earlier was L is just the last term in our sequence. So we actually have a formula for Tn. So Tn, if you remember from when we looked at arithmetic progression, is just A plus M minus 1 times D. And so what we can do is because the last term in our sequence, if you have a look here, the last term in our series is actually that Tn term, we can just substitute this whole formula in to my equation that I have here. So Sn is actually going to be equal to n over 2 times a plus a plus n minus 1 d because I've substituted this Tn value into L and just replaced it right here. Okay, and we can simplify this and so we get this f second formula n over 2 times uh, plus uh, n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 d. And so here we've got two formulas to help us figure out what the sum of an um, arithmetic series is. So what an arithmetic series is. So here, the sum of an arithmetic progression to n terms. So if we want to add the first n terms of an arithmetic progression, we get these two formulas. So n over 2 times a plus l. And the other one that we have on the right hand side is n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. Now, both of these formulas work in helping us find the sum of an arithmetic progression. But as you notice, both of them have a few things different. Well, let's before we actually look at what's different, let's talk about what's in common. Well, if you have a look in both of them, both of them have this n value. So what we need, regardless of which version you use, you need to have um, to, you need to find the total number of terms. So we need to find this n value. We require an n value. So both formulas. needs n, maybe I'll write this in black so it looks a little bit different, okay, both formulas need n, and the other thing that both formulas need is, if you have a look here, we've got the starting term as well, so here you also need, so both formulas also need, and our starting term a. So regardless of which formula you use, you're going to need to get both the number of terms that you're adding together and also um, how many, uh, what your starting term is. Now the ways that we would use this, now if you have a look at the first one, the first um, the first formula has this L value. L is just the last term in my sequence. So here, um, this is useful if given your last term in the sequence L. So if you get given the last term, L, and hopefully you know, notice why we call it L for last, if we get given the last term in the sequence, um, L, this first formula is really helpful. The other one, the way that the other one is different, if you, different is if you have a look, we've got this value D. And so here, this second version, second formula is really useful if we are given, or we can find out, if given or able to determine Um, the common difference D. And so both of these formulas can be used interchangeably to help us find the um, C, um, arithmetic progression, but one, so if you get given the last term, the first formula is a lot easier to use compared to the second one. The second one is generally like kind of it saved you in more, most circumstances, um, and you can actually go and find the last term um, if you get by using our regular arithmetic progression um, steps that we've looked at so far. But here, these two formulas, they help us find the sum of an arithmetic progression. Okay, so we spend a bit of time talking about how to get this formula. What we're going to do is actually apply this formula. Okay, so, first one here. Example 17, add up all the integers from 1 to 200 inclusive. So what we want to do in this question is we want to add up all the numbers from 1 to 100, so 200. So 100, 101, 102, and so on, all the way up to... 200. So we want to add up all of these terms together. So what we need to do is for this particular question, what are we given? Well, we're given that we've got our, uh, if we have a look, 
we're given the first term. So 100 is our first term that we're going to add together. Add. So we've got A and we've also got L, the last term. So we're adding up all of these numbers together. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, hang on, I need to use this SN is equal to N over 2 A plus L formula. And I can sub in 100 and 200 themselves. What we're missing is how many terms are in this sequence. Now, what we need to do is just count up how many numbers there are between 100 and 200. Now, you might be thinking, oh, hang on, 100 and 200, that's easy. I just do 200 minus 100, and I get 100 terms. And that is not quite the case. Um, in our, one of our lessons, we talked about how if I wanted to add up, so let's say I wanted to add up all the numbers from, and pick an easy case, let's just go from 100 to 101. Now, if you did the subtraction, you go 101 minus 100, and so you would say, oh, there's one term. But wait, have a look here. You've actually got one, two terms. And so here, when we're doing this, when we're trying to figure out how many terms there are, just be really careful. Even though, when you subtract it, that's great, but you just need to add one to actually just adjust it because you're um, getting rid of one of those numbers when you're doing that subtraction. So here, if I want to find out how many numbers there are between 100 and 200, I just need to go, okay, 100, uh, 200 minus 100, that's 100. I just need to add on 1. And so n is going to equal to, so 200 minus 100 is 100. And I just need to add on 1. And so there's actually 101 terms in 100 to 200 inclusive. It's this fact that we're using inclusive that actually makes that difference because you're going to add on the extra term. Okay, cool. So what this means, I can just sub these values in. I get 101 over 2 times our starting term A was 100 and our last term was 200. And so we can chuck this in the calculator. So here, 101 divided by 2 times 100 plus 200 is equal to 15,150. So there we go. We can actually apply that first formula. So here for this case, we were given the first and the last term, and we can actually um, put that into our formula here, but all we need to do is figure out how many terms there were. Okay, Part, uh, example 18. Given that the arithmetic progression, 40 plus 37 plus 34, and so on, find S10. So what we want to do is we want to find the sum of the first 10 um, numbers in this particular progression. Now, if you have a look, we don't know what the tenth term is. They don't tell me what the last term is. So it's going to be a little bit harder to use that um, S, um, the, this formula that we had up here. Because in order for me to use this formula, I need to have um, the first term and the last term. But if you have a look here, we can actually use the second formula. Sn is equal to n over 2a two, uh, two plus n minus 1 times d. So we can actually use this uh, second formula to help us figure out this sum really easily because we can find starting term, 40 for A. We can find the common difference by just taking two consecutive terms and figuring and calculating the common difference. And they also tell me what number, um, what uh, partial sum I want. I want the 10th partial sum. So I have a value for N here. So I can actually do all of that. Let's, um, we've got A and we've got D, and, uh, we've got A and N immediately, so we can read those off. So A, our starting term is 40. N is the 10th, uh, we just wanna add the first 10 terms. What we wanna do is just find D. And so here, to find D, we can just take any two consecutive terms, so T3 minus T2, and so that gives me 34 minus 37, and so that gives me negative three. So our common difference is three. So using that, we can actually put this straight into our formula. So here, S10 is equal to, 10 over 2 times 2 times 40 plus our n was 10 so this is going to be 9 times negative 3 and so we can chuck this in the calculator uh, and that should give us i had 265 265 okay so for this one we don't get given the last term in the sequence that we're adding together and so what we need to do is actually use at that other formula this second formula sn is equal to n over 2 bracket 2a plus n minus 1 d now you might be wondering sir i can't remember that formula and that is okay i forgot to mention this earlier but these two formulas are actually on your reference sheet these two sums of an arithmetic progression formula are both on your reference sheet so you don't need to remember them you just need to remember the parts of this formula and how to apply it okay let's have a talk about the next question part b what is the first negative partial sum okay 
Now, when we're trying to find the first negative partial sum, what we're doing is we want to find when this partial sum is less than zero. And so we went through how to answer these types of questions, similar to when we want to find the first negative term, we're just going to use the formula that we have here, but instead solve it for, um, solve it for being less than zero, or in what we normally do is to solve it for, e for it being equal to zero, and then we just check the values either side. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually solve n over two bracket two uh, a plus n minus one d is equal to zero. So I'm going to actually solve this equation using our um, values that we have here. So we want to find the value of n, so we don't actually know what n is. Uh, and so here we're going to get uh, 2 times a, so 40 is a, so this is going to be a plus uh, minus 3 times n minus 1, because I subbed in the value of d there. So here we get n over 2, uh, and this should become 83 minus 3n is equal to 0. And now that I've got this, I've got a quadratic, um, I've got a factorized quadratic, and I can actually solve this. So the two solutions are going to be, well, one of them is for this n over 2 is equal to 0. So n is equal to 2, but that doesn't seem legit. So what I'm going to solve is this guy here. So therefore, 83 minus 3n is equal to 0. And if I move this over here, negative 3n is equal to negative 83. And so n is equal to 83 over 3. Or when I put this in my calculator, this gave me uh, 27.667, uh, 667, I think it was. Okay, so what we're going to check is the, um, the partial, the 27th partial term and the 28th partial term because of those values that we have here. And so when I sub these two values in, uh, we're just subbing it in back into that formula. Uh, we end up getting uh, the 27th partial sum is 27, and the 28th partial sum is negative 14. And so therefore, the first negative partial sum, uh, oh, hang on, did I get that right? Yes, the first negative partial sum is going to be uh, S28 is equal to negative 14. Okay. So that's how we can apply this formula to also do similar questions that we normally dealt with with arithmetic progressions and finding the first negative term. We can also do the same for our first negative partial sum, for example. Okay, let's have a look at the th this next example. The sum of the first 10 terms of an AP and arithmetic progression is zero. The sum of the first and second term is 24. Find the first three terms. Okay. All we want to do here is we want to actually, we get given what the partial sum is for a few different scenarios. So let's actually just break this down. The sum of the first 10 terms. Now, how do we write the sum of the first 10 terms? Well, using our um, partial sum notation, this is just S10, S10. So S10, the sum of the first 10 terms is going to be zero. And that's what we have here. Okay, and the second thing is the sum of the first and the second term is 24. So how do we write that in our partial sum notation? Well, that's just going to be S2, uh, because that's the first and the second term, is equal to 24. Okay, so from here, what we want to do is we want to figure out what the first three terms are. Now, here, we don't have very much to work with. Well, in order for me to find those first three terms, I actually need a bit more information. I need to know what the starting term in this sequence is, and I also need to know what the uh, common difference is because it's an arithmetic progression. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite S10 and S2 using our notation, our um, rule that we came up with over here, this formula that we came up with here. Uh, and in particular, because I want to find our starting term and that common difference, I'm going to use this second version that we have here. So, using that formula we had above there. So here the formula was Sn is equal to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so I'm going to sub in S10. So 10, I'm going to sub in, whenever I see n, I'm going to sub in 10. So this becomes 10 over 2, or, uh, so I'm going to write it, 10 over 2, 2a plus 10 minus 1 times d is equal to zero. Or once I move, I'll move this down just so I can have a little bit more space to work with. Good Lord, why is this not moving down? There we go. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just gonna simplify this, this becomes 5 times, uh, I believe this gets you, uh, 2a plus 9d is equal to 0. Okay, so I've got an equa one equation here. 
The second one, I've got S2 is equal to 24. So using that same pattern, I've got 2 over 2, 2A plus 2 minus 1D is equal to 24. And so here, 2A plus, uh, what's it called? Uh, 2A plus uh, D is equal to 24. Okay, so I've actually got two equations here that I can start to try and solve. Okay, well, let's get started in figuring out what I can actually do. So here I've got equation one and equation two. Now I can solve this simultaneously. Before I do that, I'm actually going to change up question, equation one by dividing both sides by five. So I get 2a plus 9d is equal to zero. And so here, that makes it a little bit easier for us. What I can do is I can subtract the two equations. And so here I'm left with 8d equal to negative 24. So d is minus three. And if I sub d back into one of these equations, uh, let's say I sub it into the first one, back into there, uh, 2a minus 27 is equal to zero. So therefore 2a is equal to 27, a is equal to 27 over two. And so here we've got our starting term and I've got my common difference and that can actually help me find the first three terms. So t1 is just gonna be equal to a or my starting term 27 over two. T2 is just going to be the um, our starting term plus that common difference, so minus 3, and so that gives me 21 over 2. And then T3 is just going to be T2, so 21 over 2 minus 3 again, and so here we get 15 over 2. And so here, that's how I can find the first three terms using this formula for our um, sum of our, our arithmetic progression. Um, here, this one involved a bit more working out, so we can actually work backwards to help us find what the starting term and the common difference is and use that to help us find the first three terms. Okay, I've got a couple more examples here that I want to go through. Okay, so... For next example, here find the sum of square root 12 plus square root uh, 27 plus square root 48 plus all the way to 21 root 3. Okay, now here you might be thinking, huh, this doesn't look like an arithmetic progression, but if we do a little bit of working out, we can actually show that this guy here is actually going to be an arithmetic progression. Now with thirds, if you remember, what we can do is we can simplify thirds by looking for a common, uh, a square root factor that we can take out from these numbers. So we want to look for square numbers that go into these numbers. Let's start off with 12. What's a square number that can go into 12? Well, 12 can actually be written as 4 times 3. And so what I can do is I can write square root 12 as square root 4 times 3, which becomes square root 4 times square root 3. And so here this becomes, square root 4 is just 2, so this becomes 2 root 3. Okay, let's have a look at the next term, um, 27. Now 27 is just 9 times 3, and 9 is actually a square number, and so here I can write this as square root 9 times square root 3, and so this becomes 3 root 3. Hopefully we're starting to see a pattern now. We can actually divide all of these numbers by 3. So here, 48, that's just going to be 16 times 3, and I can take out here, 16 is a perfect square number, and so here, that just becomes 4 root 3. And so here, this is an, a really great example of a hidden arithmetic progression. We actually need to do a bit of work in order to get to here. So what's our, uh, we want to find this sum. Now here, they've actually given us the starting term and the last term, which is great. And so I can actually just use this, my formula, uh, Sn is equal to n over 2a plus l. We have the values for a and we have the values for l. But we don't have how many terms there are in the sequence. Now, if you have a look, we start from the second term and we go all the way up to the 21st term. So here, what I can do is just similar to my pre first example, I can just go, okay, well, if you have a look, each time we're going up, we're just adding it in an extra square root three. So here, I can just go, well, the number of terms is gonna be 21 minus two, which is 19, and I'm gonna add one to it, so that's 20 terms in this sequence. So here, this is S20 is equal to 20 over two, two root three plus 21 root three. And so that will give me 10 times 23 root three, which is 230 root three. Okay, so that's how we can answer this question. So here we actually need to do a few additional steps to actually get to showing that this was actually an arithmetic progression hidden a hidden arithmetic progression. Okay, next example. 
here we're dealing with logarithms, and if you remember when we deal with logs, um, every time we uh, when we we're going to need to apply our log laws here. So here we want to find the sum of this following um, pattern. So here we want to find the sum of log thirty six, uh, log b thirty six. We don't know what the base is. Log b eighteen, log b nine, all the way to log b nine over eight. Now here, like the first one, like the previous one, we have our first term and our last term. And so here I immediately am thinking, oh. Maybe I should use this guy here. But we have a bit of a problem because we don't know how many terms there are in the sequence. And so what we can do is we can actually figure that out by getting, using a few pieces of information from my, um, from my question. So here we don't know what this n value is, but we can actually figure that out by doing a little bit work, a bit of little bit of work um, with our sequence. So here what I can do is because this is an arithmetic progression, I can go, okay, a is equal to, our starting term is just going to be log b36, and for my common difference, I just take two consecutive terms, so I could go log b9 and subtract log b18, and when you subtract logs, you divide, so here this becomes log b9 uh, over 18, which is log b1 over 2, and using another one of my log laws, the power log law, this becomes negative log b2. Now the reason why I've done this is because, well, I want to figure out what term this is. I want to find out which, what the value of this tn is. So what I can do is I can write my tn formula, and that's equal to a plus n minus 1 times d, or in this case, it's just going to be log b36 uh, minus log b2 n minus 1 times n minus 1. Okay. And so here, what I can do from here is I can go, okay, well, I actually know that I've, um, I've got here, um, this is equal to log b9 over 8. And so I can use, um, use a bit of arithmetic and actually um, just by solving for n, I can figure out how many terms are in this sequence. So the first step I would do, move that log b36 to the other side. And so here we get negative uh, log b 2 is equal to log b9 over 8 minus log b36. Oh, hang on. I'm missing something here, aren't I? Yeah. Let me see if I can get this. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to erase it all. So on here, it should be negative log b2 times n minus 1. And so when you subtract logs, you're going to divide. And so here, this is just going to give me 9 over 8 divided by uh, 36 on the right-hand side. So it becomes equal to log b1 over 32. Uh, so negative log b2 n minus 1. And if I move this across over here, uh, what we need to do here is for our following step is just divide both sides by negative log b2. So here we're going to have m minus 1 is equal to log b1 over 32 over negative log b2. Now, once again, we don't have, uh, we've got this um, random base log, um, but we can actually chuck this in our calculator now. If you're not sure how to simplify it any further, log 1 over 32 over log uh, 2, and we want a negative version of this, so I'm going to put a negative sign out the front of here. Negative log 2. Ooh. And so that will give me 5. And so here, n minus 1 is equal to 5, so n is equal to 6. And so that tells me that this term is my 6th term. And so for this particular question, bring it all the way back here. What we want to find is the partial sum of the first 6 terms, so that's 6 over 2 log b36 plus log b9 over 8. And so here this just becomes uh, 36, uh, when you add logs you times them together, so this becomes 36 times 9 over 8, which gives you 81 over 2, so this is 3 log b81 over 2, and you can simplify this further and I think the final answer that you could get is log uh, 4 log b3 minus log b2.
So the partial sum of the first six terms is going to give you this. So for this one, what we actually had to do was we had to use our the skills that we had from um, looking at arithmetic progressions and um, finding, um, we had to find what term this last particular term was. Because in both of our formulas, we need to know how many numbers, how many terms are in our sequence. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. Here we've got the first term of an arithmetic sequence is five. The first, uh, the ratio of the, and of the sum of the first four terms to the sum of the first 10 terms is 8 to 35. Find the common difference. So let's just break down this question and see what information we have here. The first term of an arithmetic series sequence is 5. So the first term, T1, or just A, that's equal to 5. That's what this first part tells me. Now the ratio of the sum of the first four terms, so the sum of the first four terms, how do we write that? We write that as S4. Uh, to the sum of our first 10 terms, now the sum of our first 10 terms, that is S10. And what we say, what they tell me here is the ratio of these two. The ratio of these two is equal to to 35. That's what this question tells me. Okay, what we want to do using that information is to figure out the common difference. Okay, well, how do we get started with this? Well, it might be helpful for us to actually write an equation for S4 and S10. So using our um, equation, so here because we wanted to find the common difference, I'm going to use that formula n over, so sn is equal to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d, because this formula has this common difference I actually want to find. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in 4. S4 is going to be, when I sub in 4, I get 2 times 2a plus 3d. And when I sub in 10, I'm going to get 5 times 2a plus 9d. Now, in both of these scenarios, they tell me that the uh, starting term is 5, and so what I can do is I can replace a with 5, and so here we get 10 plus 3d and 10 plus 9d for both of these. Okay, now here they tell me that the ratio of those first four terms is equal to 8 to 35. So what I can do is when you see the word ratio, another way that you can write a ratio is as a fraction. And so what I can do is I can write this as S4 over S10 is equal to 8 over 35. And so here, what I can do is I can substitute my values in. I've got 2, 10 plus 3D over 5, 10 plus 9D, and that's equal to 8 over 35. Okay, and once I've done that, I can actually start solving this equation. So what I can do is I can cross multiply. I can multiply opposite sides together. So here, I'm going to multiply these two together. So I get 70, 10 plus 3D. And then the other one, I can multiply the other opposite fractions, uh, opposite numerators and denominators together. And so we get 40, 10 plus 9D. And we can start to solve this. Now, both of them have this 70 and 40, so we can cancel out a 10 from both of them. And so I'm left with, on the left-hand side, when I expand this, 70 plus 21D is equal to 40 plus 36D. And so here we can start to solve this. I'm going to move all my Ds to the right-hand side. So here I get 15D is equal to 30. And so therefore, the difference is equal to 2. So here we can once again use that um, partial sum uh, formula to help me get an expression to help for S4, the fourth um, partial sum, and S10, the tenth partial sum, and using that help me figure out, um, answer this particular question here. Okay, I'm going to go through one HSC question because I don't want to spend, uh, this video is going quite a bit longer than we usually do. Um, so here, I'm going to actually go through this 2012 HSE question. Um, for some of you who came for our HSE, um, I think, what was it called? Um, a couple of our lessons um, online, we actually had a look, um, oh, one of, what's it called? We went through the first part of this in one of our online lessons. I'm actually going to go through it again just to see, uh, just to highlight the differences in uh, this question. So, Jay is making a pattern using triangular tiles. The pattern has three tiles in the first row, five tiles in the second row, and each successive row has two more tiles in the previous row. Now, if you have a look at this question, I asked this in class as well, but what in this, what phrasing in this, or what phrase in this question indicates to you that you're working with arithmetic progressions? Well, if you have a look, this part here, each successive row has two more tiles in the previous row. What this tells me is that each time I'm going to the next row, I'm adding on two extra tiles. 
So this bit to me indicates to me that this is an AP, and not only that, it tells me what the common difference is. The common difference is 2. Um, so let's have a look at the questions here. Part 1. How many tiles would J use in row 20? Now here, let's just think about this question. Is it asking me to add together the first 20 rows? Well, no, it's actually just asking me how many tiles is going to be, so in row 20, how many tiles are going to be used there altogether? So what I'm going to actually use for this first question is not the sum of a geometric series, of an arithmetic progression. I'm actually going to just use the formula for Tn. So Tn, or our nth term in our arithmetic progression, is just going to be equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. And all we need to do to find the 20th row is just we need to figure out well, first of all, we know what the n value is because that's 20, but we need to find our starting term and our common difference. Now, what I said earlier was that the common difference is 2 because each row gets 2 more tiles. And if you have a read of the question, well, where do we see what the first row is? Well, you can also you can look at it in the diagram and you notice there's 1, 2, 3. Or you can read here, the pattern has 3 tiles in the first row. And so a is just going to be equal to 3. And so here, this just becomes 3 plus... Uh, uh, 2 times n minus 1. And so here this becomes 3 plus 2n minus 2, and so that becomes 2n plus 1. So here if we want to find the 20th row, all we're going to do is sub in 20 into this formula, so we get 2 times 20 plus 1, which gives me 41. And so here, when you're reading these questions, just be really careful. What type of question is asking you? Are you trying to find the term, or are you trying to find the sum, a partial sum, up until that point? And so for this case, it's actually asking you to find um, the term. Okay, part two. How many tiles would J use altogether to make the first 20, first 20 rows? Now have a look at this one again. Uh, is it asking me to find out the partial sum, so the sum of the first 20 rows, or is it just find, asking me to find the 20th row? Or you have a look here, this is where it's different because we want to see how many tiles J would use altogether to make the first 20 rows. So we want to actually find S20. Uh, now for this one, this one is actually going to be um, quite easy for us because we already know N, we know that we're adding together the first 20 rows, and if you have a look at the question, we've actually found one of the parts that's going to help me. Well, in both of the formulas we need the starting term, which we already have A, but the other thing that we've also found is we found how many tiles are in the last row. We found from the first part that there's going to be 41 tiles. And so here, I'm actually going to use this formula. Um, I'm going to use the SN formula. SN, SN is equal to N over 2 A plus L because I've got the starting term and I've also got the last term. And so here, this becomes S20 is equal to 20 over 2 times 3 plus 41 because I know that in the last row, in the 20th row, we've got 41 tiles. And so here we can um, figure, uh, we can simplify this. This becomes 440 tiles altogether. Okay. So for this one, we're actually, we can use the information from part one to help me actually figure out the answer for this. Okay, final part. Part three J has only 200 tiles. How many complete rows of, pat uh, of the pattern can J make? So here, we get told that J has a total of 200 tiles. And so here, are we going to use um, TN or are we going to use SN? Well, if we think about it, TN tells me, if I said TN is equal to 200, what I'm actually solving for is which row would you have 200 tiles? Which row would you have 200 tiles? But if I solve SN is equal to 200, I'm trying to figure out how many rows we can make with 200 altogether. So here, TN is only asking for like the row where you've got 200 tiles, but SN asks me to find, SN would actually get me how many rows altogether would add together to give me 200. And so here, I'm going to actually solve the equation. SN is equal to 200. And so here, um, in, uh, here I'm going to use, be solving this. Now, do we know the last term in this particular sequence? Well, no, we don't know what the last term that we need to add on to get 200 tiles is. So what I'm going to need to use is I'm going to need to use the other formula. I'm going to need to use n over 2, a, oh, 2a plus n minus 1 times d is equal to 200. 
because with this formula I actually know the common difference. If you look up from the first part we've got that the common difference was 2 and so here I'm going to need to use this formula and not the other formula because I don't know what the last term is. I don't know what the last row is that will add on to get me a number that's less than 200. So here let's actually go about and put in a few values here. So I'm trying to find n I know that my starting term was 3, so this becomes 6 plus, my common difference was 2, so this becomes 2n minus 2 is equal to 200, and so n over 2 um, times 4 plus 2n is equal to 200, and I can actually put this over 2 into the brackets and I get n2 plus n is equal to 200. Now that I've got this, I can actually solve this as a quadratic, so this becomes uh, n squared plus 2n is equal to 200, and so n squared plus 2n minus 200 is equal to 0. And so we're solving this equation to help me figure out what value of n I need. Now, if you have a look at this, I don't think this is actually quite easily factorizable. So what I'm going to actually use instead is the quadratic formula. So I'm going to use a quadratic formula which is on your reference sheet, which is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so all we need to do is just sub in b, a, and c from this quadratic b is just a coefficient of the n term which happens to be 2 so this is going to give me negative 2 plus or minus square root 2 squared minus 4 times a is the coefficient of my n squared term which happens to be 1 1 times uh, the c which is the other uh, the constant at the end negative 200 over 2 times 1 so a was 1 so here um, I'm going to get this value now I'm going to immediately see that one of these values I'm going to get rid of. So here uh, in the um, fraction, in the square root, I'm actually going to get 2 squared uh, minus 4 times 1 times negative 200. So it gives me 804 divided by 4 will give me 201. So this is going to be 2 root um, 201 over 2, which will give me negative 1 plus uh, square root 201. Now one of these values we can actually immediately get, uh, get rid of. If I do a minus, this number just becomes a very big negative number. And as we said earlier, we can't have negative values of n. And so the answer that we're going to look at is one, negative 1 plus square root 201, which would give me negative 1, oh, negative 1 plus square root 201 is 13.17. So that's 13.17. So what I'm going to check is... Uh, the partial sum of the 13 of the first 13 rows and the partial sum of the first 14 rows. And so here, if I sub these two values into my formula that we had, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub this into my formula that we had over here that we used for this question. So this is going to be 13 over 2 times uh, 4 plus, uh, what's it called? 4 plus 2 times 13, and this is going to be 14 over 2. 4 plus 2 times 14. So that was using this formula that we got over here um, for our um, value. Actually, we can use the one underneath, I realized. Oh, that's even easier. So this actually becomes, using the formula underneath, 13 times 15 and 14 times 16. So 13 times 14, 13 times 15 will give me 195 and 14 times 16 will give me 224. So if we think about those two numbers, how many complete rows can Jay make? Well, if he only has 200 tiles, then he can only make 13 rows. And so here, Jay can only make 13 complete rows. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson. Um, that was a bit long, I understand. Um, but let's just do a quick recap of what we looked at in today's lesson. In today's lesson, we started looking at the sum of an arithmetic progression. And what we actually got was we could use these two formulas to help me figure out what the sum was. And so the two formulas, these are both on your reference sheet. So these are on your ref sheet. Ref sheet that you can use. And so what we need to do is we need to know how many terms there are in my sequence. Um, what the starting term is and we can either get if we get given the last term in our sequence that we're adding together or if we know the common difference we can actually figure out um, we can actually um, use either one of these formulas so that's it for today's lesson year, year 12s um, we will have an online lesson where we go through a few more HSC questions and a few harder questions as well um, so i'll see you guys then for our online lesson 
Uh, but as always, stay safe, stay healthy, stay wonderful, and I'll see you then. Bye.